Well, good day to everybody. Thanks a lot for joining me as at this Wednesday afternoon market recap. We have seen the markets collectively take another bounce to the upside. It does appear as though we have just broken above the swing highs. This is taking us back to this candlestick over here. This is dated January the 18th. We have also now moved above that of Friday's closing price last week, dated the 25th. Is this move sustainable? At this particular point, it is a little bit too early to tell whether or not we do get a definitive continuation above this area. That is what is going to be most important. So in light of the change behind the market, or at least this continuation or what appears to be a continuation, what we will do is place a little bit of a bullish trigger here on the S&P 500, coming in at roughly 2,712. This is above this little break-even point, or at least this pivot point over here between past resistance or past support and also really current resistance still at this particular point. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, really, we have about 10 minutes left in today's session. It is up very close to 1.5%. That varies a lot because the NASDAQ, comparatively speaking, is up 2.5%. Uh, this is on the back of the Fed comments, all right, from um, Powell today, really talking about, again, normalizing the balance sheet or the lack thereof. And of course, really dispelling any rumors of continued rate hikes really moving forward for 2019. The markets have loved this. What has also happened is that given this statement or along these lines, the US dollar has somewhat tanked during today's session. We are down very close to uh, 50 points on the US dollar index. And the big beneficiary of this move has been both GLD, you can see taking off to the upside and also SLV. So really what's most critical for us at the moment is whether or not we are still going to see this little bit of a turn down from this uh, respective resistance area. If I bring up that of the longer term simple moving averages, you can see on the Dow Jones, we've just come on up and we've closed more or less right at both that sideways moving 100 and 200 simple moving average. We spoke about this over the weekend. We weren't necessarily uh, really certain if the market would have enough gas in the tank, so to speak, to come on up and actually retest this. Well, as at the close today being Wednesday, we have essentially done that. So now really comes the moment of truth as to whether or not we are going to see that definitive area of resistance show up, not only on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, but even potentially a little bit higher on the S&P 500. You can see that my trigger at the moment is slightly positioned uh, more or less right below that uh, sort of declining or sideways moving 100, simple moving average. I'm still going to move this up. The reason for that is because we essentially started buying down here at 2,525 after this candlestick. So we already have vested interest and positions already to the upside but really the narrative during this position over here at least this sideways sort of transition that was looking to reverse was well we were looking to actually re-add to those original positions over here and then take advantage of that continuation so we are going to have to monitor this move see whether or not it is sustainable whether it does have legs collectively across the board still we are still battling technically with these declining exponential moving averages but also given the rally that we have seen since the 26th of uh, december you can see that we are still pushing up into overbought territory. We are only just starting to actually cross out of this, depending on which market you are looking at. So we are starting to see, again, bifurcated signals, mixed signals. It's really not overwhelming one direction or another. I understand during today's session, we did see a rather strong pop to the upside. But again, really, if you think about it, and a good way to surmise this at the moment is that if I bring up the weekly chart, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it's only up 295 points, so it's not the biggest moves. And again, we still haven't definitively broken above this support term resistance area. So again, don't want to get carried away on this move. Hopefully, you do have positions already in the Dow if you chose to take them out on the diamonds. Okay, contingency orders placed at 23,432, so you should be sitting back anyway. Um, really just satisfied with this pop that we are just continuing to see even through to or very close to the close on Wednesday. Outside of that, I just wanted to report also Boeing Airlines came out with its earnings. Uh, we saw a very strong pop to the upside. We almost traded at new all-time highs. So again, this is a relatively speaking no-brainer trade. All we need to do with this, given that we do have the swing high taking us back to more or less coinciding with the market high, is placed in an entry here at 394.96. This is going to be above that of today's candlestick. You can place your stop below the low of the candlestick and then again, just hold this if it chooses to break out and continue to actually uh, actually trend. Now, we've got a very strong volume surge on this stock as well. If you bring up the CCI, if I can push the right key on my keyboard and the ADX, this is going to be somewhat short term. Uh, well, it's going to be obviously adjusting for that of the gap, which is earnings related. But you can see that the CCI, the Commodity Channel Index, it is broken above 100. We've got the ADX turning up and it was already quite extended given, of course, the move that we saw of $300 uh, sort of psychological round number. So this stock here, 
Boeing Airlines is looking quite good. Obviously, if I flick through some of the other technical indicators, we are above the simples, above also the exponential moving averages. Yes, we are somewhat rather overextended and overbought. This is really a symptom of the market that we have been looking at. But again, as the market shifts, we need to shift as well. And again, it's not overwhelming, or at least it's not uh, as certain as what we would like to see this market break out. I mean, it's not a definitive break yet, but we are getting very close to such an event occurring. Okay, so we're just going to have to monitor this for a little bit, right? Follow along with it. But if we do start cracking and seeing at least consecutive closes and a continuation above this area, there's no reason why you simply cannot take the trade from 2.7. Again, this is the S&P 500 all the way up most likely to about 3,000 uh, on the index itself. Now, again, outside of Boeing Airlines, Apple, big company, all right, reported earnings as well. We saw the gap up. Today, we're up $10.74. Nice move on Apple. Also, what I'll do is I'll bring up uh, my entry price here. And again, we still have a couple of minutes left in today's session. But if we start really continuing above the swing high of this candlestick, all right, the swing high of today's candle, it's going to be another continuation type of trade, very similar to what I've just spoken about on Boeing Airlines. It's going to open the window for movements up to you know $200 per share on Apple. We've spoken about this in the past. The good news for Apple is that it looks to be holding that trend line. It seems to be building off from that trend line. I'll just close this down. It's frozen on me in the background. And this is potentially, again, the beginning of clawing back the majority of those gains that we have, or sorry, the losses that we have printed over the past three months, okay? It's not only applicable to Apple, it's also applicable to other tech companies as well. But if I can zoom out now that my chart is responsive, we've spoken about the retest, or essentially not the retest, but the clawing back, the giving back, the making back of these losses since we began printing earlier in the month of October. So we're very early on in this process. It's sort of a theme which is showing up not only in tech, but also a lot of other companies as well. And this may be very well the beginning of that move. It's not going to happen in a linear line, but you've got Boeing Airlines breaking out. You've got Apple gapping to the upside. Caterpillar came out. Again, not all that good, but it does still set the stage given, of course, the support that we have built over the past number of months. In fact, today, we've got another white candlestick. It seems to be closing this gap over here, which is good. Still not a stock that I want to jump into necessarily immediately. Uh, but again, we've still got an action-packed last two sessions of the week. And it's going to be interesting to see whether or not the gas or at least this move here is going to continue into Thursday and also into Friday. All right, so pay attention, be patient. But the time, if in fact it has changed, or at least the direction, the market direction, the discourse given today by the Fed, that's going to shift market sentiment and people are going to essentially be prepared to continue to speculate, which is going to push and propel prices higher. Okay, so let's go into us is at Wednesday. If you have any questions, email me, success at pivotpoint-trading.com. Until next time, everybody. It's James signing off on behalf of Pivot Point Trading. Goodbye.